Why is yeah. it that many of our people, especially immigrants, why don't they get a mortgage? What is what are the key things in your experience that is prohibiting our people from getting a mortgage? When it comes to people I've come across, it's mm. the mentality. So mm. we have this perception that it's difficult to get a mortgage or it's not our thing. It's mm. more of a white, white people's thing. Then there is, should I say culture or religion? Because you're going to find um, some of my Muslim friends telling you I can't get anything Ooh. that pays interest. Yeah, but then yeah, they don't yeah, know that yeah. there are what we call Islamic mortgages. Ooh. You can get a mortgage. Yeah, there are Islamic mortgages whereby you mm. can get a mortgage and you don't necessarily have to pay interest. Let's say the interest is all put together with the actual uh, mortgage amount you're paying on a monthly basis. Mm. So even the lack of knowledge, people mm. are not aware of um, you know, things they are capable of doing. It's like there are some people who have been living in, let's say, council houses for a while, mm. and you would not need, you would not necessarily need a deposit on such properties, especially. I'm talking now about England and Wales England, because we still England. have right to buy. Oh, uh, I think that's no longer applicable in Scotland. No, but in no, England it's and Wales, we still have right to buy. Right so to with buy. the right to buy, depending on how many years you've de uh, you've lived in the property, you normally get a discount from the council or housing wow. association when you're wow. buying your property. Wow. So let's say someone has been living in a property for over six or ten years, and the value of the property is fifty. Depending on the discount you're getting, it's normally a huge discount. Wow. And I normally advise people to take advantage of this because you're not going to get it anywhere else. That's right. Imagine something, imagine someone giving you a discount of 30 or 25 percent. Whoa. And when that's you have huge. This, exactly. Mm. When you have this, you don't necessarily need a deposit to get a mortgage. Wow. So such opportunities people are not aware of. Hmm. Yeah, but it's mainly our mentality, the culture, and the misconception. It's very mm. difficult. It takes long and all that. I mean, look at you. We're talking, and you said you're able to pay off yours in I don't know how many how many yeah. years. Yeah. These things are yeah. available, and they happen, but yeah. not everyone is aware of this. So, yeah, those are some of the things that are hindering migrants to get mortgages. Wow. Home ownership is such a big deal here in the UK, and for the right reasons. Not simply because of the cost involved, but as we all know, um, home ownership is one of the ways to build wealth here in the West. Yet the process of buying a house can be really complicated, especially for those who have come from developing economies, where you know the process of getting a mortgage uh, may not be straightforward, as we are used to back home, as we say. I mean, back in Ghana, you know, I simply have to build my own house and I don't have to go for a loan, what is also known as a mortgage. But here in the UK, that is the norm, or even generally in the West, that is the norm. So today, it gives me a lot of pleasure to have uh, a very good friend, um, Connie Kavuma, uh, who is a licensed mortgage advisor. In fact, I'll allow her to give you her credentials uh, to have a question with her regarding the process of buying a house in the UK, what it means to get a mortgage and all of that. Um, you can use the comment section to indicate any question you have. Connie will be in the comment section to be responding to you. And if you need one-to-one -one advice, she'll be happy to uh, support you accordingly. Welcome to That's right, Careers and Investments. This is our YouTube channel with nearly 10,000 people watching you today. Welcome. Sure. First of all, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the time. And yeah, like you said, I'm Connie Kavma. And I work for the mortgage experts. That's my network I work under. And I've done this for the last two years. However, I've been in financial services for over 10 years. So yeah, and the whole idea of getting into this was the confusion, the misconception about um, mm. getting a home as a migrant. And to be honest, it's not as difficult or as complicated mm. as people think. Mm. If you get the knowledge, it could be straightforward, I would say. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I must say that I'm very encouraged. And you know how, you know, eager I was to speak into you, um, to mm. see somebody who looks like me, who is a licensed mortgage advisor. 
I mean, of course, we could go for, you know, our white counterparts or other, you know, ethnicities. But I believe that, you know, when you see somebody who looks like you, it is less intimidating and you're able to mm -hmm. open up, you know, more because you also have a better understanding of our finances than, you know, others. So uh, thank you for doing this for us. You know, what are the steps, you know, before applying for a mortgage? Where should we even start from? So I normally advise my clients that before you even think of uh, applying for a mortgage, save up as much as you can. Because mm -hmm. the, uh, the bigger the deposit you have, the better chances you have in getting a better rate, more, more products, and, you know, more lenders are willing to give you than anything mm -hmm. else. Then the mm -hmm. other thing is clean up your bank statement. Mm -hmm. Make sure that whatever is on uh, your bank statement in terms of income, expenditure, and all that is indeed yours. Mm -hmm. Then I also advise people to check their credit report. This gives um, a history of your spending and pretty much how you've been dealing with debt. Mm. Then I advise people to get the documents, the required documents for a mortgage application in order. Then get yourself a broker. They normally help out uh, in terms of preparing you to get a mortgage and even walking the whole way with you until you actually get your keys. Yes. yes. I like how this conversation that is actually starting um, because we are going to go into the detail of these five things that you've listed. First, save a deposit clean your bank statements. And I like that one, clean it. What, what does it mean to clean it, you know? Uh, check your credit reports, your documents, and then get a broker. Um, so we'll, we'll delve into this. I think in my last couple of videos, I showed people mm. how they can actually get their credit reports for free. If you've not seen yes. that video, I would encourage you to definitely do check it out. Uh, and I'll put a, a link to that in the description box below. But what should they be looking out for in the credit report? So for in the credit report, I'll advise people to look at three practical um, checks. Hmm. Number one would be make sure address history is correct and up to date. Hmm. Number two, I would, uh, I would encourage people to register, to make sure that they're registered on the voters register. You don't have to vote, but make sure you're registered. Hmm. Number three, I normally advise people that if you financially if you're still financially associated with someone from your past, we could talk. Uh, we could talk of people who have gone through a divorce. Mm. If financially you are associated with your ex-partner and you no you no longer have links, I would advise you to cut them off from your credit report. Mm. You also mentioned that the first thing you'd encourage people to do is to check uh, for a decision in principle. Mm. What exactly is that, and how do they go about getting that, or even how is that calculated? So for the decision in principle, when you go to the bank or your mortgage broker uh, with all the documents uh, that are required, uh, when I talk about documents, I'm talking about uh, proof of ID. This can be your passport or driving license, then proof of income. Um, that can be your pay slips. And if you're uh, self-employed, that could be your accounts and tax overviews then um, proof of address, it could be a utility bill, mm. and then uh, you would need your bank statement as well. So if you have all these documents in order and you take them to your broker and you have your savings as well, I'm talking about the deposit you're going to use for the property, they'll enter your, your information and then um, you get a quote. It's like a quote, uh, deciding on how much based on the information they have entered how much the uh, the bank can lend to you so a decision in principle is not a guarantee this can mm. change mm. it's just an idea of how much the bank is willing to give you given the soft check mm. they've done yes well so who qualifies to get a mortgage in the uk let's take a typical person i arrived in the uk today could I get a mortgage today? If not, how can I prepare myself to get a mortgage? If you've just arrived in the UK, definitely not. Mm. So let's say you're not a citizen. You need to have lived in the country for 12 months straight before you can mm. qualify for a mortgage. All right. However, mm -hmm. if you're earning more than 75K per annum, mm. 
you can apply for a mortgage even having lived here for less than 12 months. It could mm. be six months or three mm. months. Mm. As long as you're earning a, a certain threshold, you mm. could get, uh, you could apply for a mortgage. But okay. other than that, for an immigrant, you need to have lived here for 12 months straight. You need to be earning at least 35K per annum. Ooh. For the 12 months that's used to build up your credit it's yeah. like that's what the banks are, are pretty much using to look at mm. your credit history yes mm. then yeah. it means it is important that once you arrive you build on your credit score or your credit history in order to have some you know records that can uh, help the bank you know uh, determine whether you're eligible or not isn't it that's correct that's Absolutely. very correct I, I guess this applies to anywhere else your Absolutely. credit history matters a lot I think in the beginning, you also mentioned that one could go to either their bank or a mortgage advisor. Which of these two approaches would you actually encourage? Is it better to go to, you know, a mortgage advisor or to your bank? Okay, so for that, I normally use this example. Going to a mm. mortgage broker is like going to a shopping mall. Mm. You have access to so many shops and so many products. Unlike going to a bank, it's like going to a particular shop and they can only mm. sell to you what they have. So that's the best way I can answer that. Yeah. Uh, then I guess it's wisdom to perhaps use a, a mortgage advisor because they can, you know, have a wider view of the market and give you a better rate rather than going to a specific, you know, bank. Unless, of course, you are willing to go to multiple banks, which perhaps may be, you know, stressful. And the other thing um, about using a mortgage broker is that when the interest rates change and we've already put in an application for you, we could reapply uh, for you to take advantage of the lower interest rates. And uh, the bank wouldn't do this for you. Uh, yes. As long as you've not exchanged contracts yet, even if we've already made the application, we could resubmit the application to take advantage for the uh, to the lower rates. Mm. Yes. So who stands the best chance of getting the lowest interest rate on a mortgage? And I think this is a very relevant question, particularly in this you know, uh, environment that we live in with soaring interest rates. How can one person give themselves you know, the best chance to get a, the lowest rate possible? The one thing I wanted to point out to everyone listening is a lower interest rate does not necessarily mean that the mortgage is cheap. Mm, mm, explain. The rate, the rate could be low, but mm. you could be paying other fees. That's right. You could get a product which mm. is like 4% mm. and it has a product fee attached mm. to it. Mm. Mm. And someone else could get a product that's, uh, let's say, 5%, but with no product fee. Mm. so you need to be very careful i know mm. many people come in looking for lower rates <laughs> but right. you need to look at the product as a whole as because a whole. if you look at the monthly payments you're going to be making especially if you're going to add the product fee to the loan mm. you end up paying more, that's, more than someone who has taken a, a, a rate that's slightly higher than yours mm. so yeah and to go back to your question how can you get um lower rates one thing i advise people is to save up as much as they can mm. meaning the bigger the deposit the better chances you stand at getting a lower rate and more products mm. then number two is if you have a good credit uh, report or a good credit score you also you also stand a chance of getting a better rate mm. or better products mm. yeah then if you could try to minimize the amount of debt you have or keep it at a minimal, you also stand bit, a bit, getting a better rate. Oh, wow. That's really, 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 really insightful. So when you say the, the cost of the product, then I guess it is for the person to consider how long they are taking the product for and then the total sum they'll be paying over the life course of that product and then compare it based on the sums rather than looking at just the interest rate or how much you'll be paying per month. Because like you say, the, the cost of the product can actually, you know, make it more costly. So um, that's something, you know, I, I have not thought about, but that's yeah. really, you know, a really good shout. 
Now, let's come to the bank statement because I think in the beginning, among other things, you should have the documents you need to apply for, for the mortgage. You said proof of ID, proof of address, the bank statements, and I think the proof of deposit. Mm -hmm. What are we looking for in the bank statements? How do we, you know, make our bank statements look good? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for the bank statement... I would say make sure that all your streams of income are reflected mm. on the bank statement. Mm. I'm talking about your wages, mm. um, your commission if you're getting one, bonuses. Mm. If you're mm. getting any kind of benefit, just make sure it's reflected on your bank statement. Mm. Then uh, number two, I always advise people to keep their bank balance in credit for at least six months straight. Avoid right. going into um, an, over, an overdraft. Yeah, then your bank statement should mainly reflect essential expenditure. Mm. What I mean by that is your food, your bills, or any other loans you're paying. Mm. I'm not trying to encourage people to withdraw large sums of money, but mm. things like um, takeaways. If you're very big on takeaways, let's say every Friday you're, order, you're getting an Uber here and there, I would rather pay with it using cash rather than your um Whoa. your bank card. Then mm. people who do gambling, gambling mm. on your bank statement doesn't look good at all. Mm. No, so if no. you would withdraw a bit of cash instead of using your bank card on things like that, mm. that's better rather than it reflecting what it it gives um the lender a different picture mm. about you. Mm. Then do you see the references when you're transferring money? To someone, ah. make sure the references you're using are actually people's names, ah. rather okay. than you okay. know people put. When you look at bank statements, you're going to see all sorts of things. And one thing I advise people is, if you're I'm a victim, money, use I'm a victim, names, I'm least. a victim, I'm a victim, yes, I'm a victim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then um, your credit card payments should be uh, kept at a minimum. Don't mm. overuse uh, whatever you have on your credit card. Then mm. all the activity on your bank statement should be indeed yours. Because, mm. you know, sometimes people bring in their bank statements and you ask them, what is this? And they mm. have no idea. So before you bring this to me, look through your bank statement and make sure all the things are in line with you. Wow. Yeah. No, that, that's a lot to unpack. So how many bank statements are acceptable? I mean, because usually people have, you know, multiple bank statements and have different streams of income. Um, is it possible to, you know, combine multiple bank statements then? You could, you could, as right. long as, they're, as long as they're in your names and address right. and right. they're reflecting uh, your income or your right. expenditure. You right. can bring in uh, as many bank statements as you can, but on average, right. we take three months. Sometimes oh. when the bank is doing its assessment, it could go on and ask you for more, depending on right. what information they are looking for. Right. So normally I advise people to give it at least six months straight. Make sure your bank statement is clean. Yes. Right. But on average, right. they ask for three months. Right. And when you say clean, it's what you've explained that, you know, gambling should be off, reduce the takeaways. Exactly. If you want to do something like that, mm -hmm. then consider using cash rather than, you know, um, using yeah. your bank statements, which would reflect and use the names of the persons rather than, you know, funny names and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who yeah. try to outsmart the system by bringing in, you know, borrow, well, borrowing money from friends and all of that. And then there's a huge deposit into their, into their account to build a deposit. What, what do you say about that? I mean... One thing I can tell everyone is you might think you're smart, but we are smarter, not in mm. a cheeky way, but mm. we mm. are going to trace where this money is coming from. And we shall need an explanation of mm. why large chunks are on your bank statement. Mm. Don't get me wrong. You can right. get a gifted deposit from a family member right. or a close friend, depending on which lender you're going to. Some right. banks can say we can only accept uh, gift, gifted deposits from only family members. Right. And other lenders might say we accept gifted deposits from even close friends. 
Mm. and maybe from abroad. So my advice would be, if you're getting any gifted deposit, try to disclose this to your mortgage uh, to your mortgage broker. They will know which lenders to look at and mm. which lenders to eliminate. Mm. Yeah, don't try to <laughs> play smart and try to m- maybe hide this away because anyway, we are going to ask, where is this mm. money coming from and what's the relationship uh, between you and this person? In some cases, we might require bank statements from the person who has given you the money, and we might require a letter from them. Right, 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 right. No, that's that's, that's really helpful. I'm aware, you know, our conversation is taking uh, long, and so I'll I'll be ending it shortly. But where can we find you? You know, where can we find even a good mortgage advisor? Where do you work generally? And by the way, you've got, you know, a YouTube channel and you're on TikTok and you're everywhere. What is your handle? You know, put it in the comment section mm-hmm. so that people can, you know, uh, can can reach out to you. Uh, so how can we find a good mortgage advisor? Uh, and are you happy to help people who come through Diaspora Careers and Investments? Yes. Yeah, so I'm based in the East Midlands and oh. I can only advise on people uh, living in England and Wales. People living right. in Scotland, we can have a chat, but I can't I, I can't advise you on what to do. Then right. uh, people living in Northern Ireland, it's the same thing. We can have a chat. I don't mind that, but I can't advise. And yeah. I work um, under the network called the Mortgage Experts. Mortgage Experts. Um, my, YouTube, yeah, my YouTube channel is Connie Kavma. You can find me there. The same applies to my Instagram, my Facebook, and TikTok. Right. Just put in Konica, you'll see me. Yes. Would you give people a discount if they say they came through Daspra Careers and Investments? Is there a discount, please? I'm open. I'm open to that. It will depend. Yeah. But this is business. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you must give me a cut of your, 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 all those, you know, who come to you because of, you know, this interview. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Connie, and uh, I've learned so much. I'll leave you, if you've got any final comments, you know, for people who are thinking of applying for mortgages, do you have any closing remarks for them? Uh, My closing remark would be, it's not as difficult as you think. Mm. If you prepare, things are not that difficult. Mm. My advice is save up as much as you can before Mm. you think of uh, even going to the bank or going to any broker. Because mm. the larger the deposit, like I said, mm. the better chance you stand of getting better rates, better products, or a variety of products. Mm. But yeah, yes. What will be your advice in terms of the percentage they put down? What will be your minimum and what will be your maximum, if at all? I wouldn't advise on what's the minimum or whatever, because it all depends mm. on the price of the property you're buying. Right, right. I w- you can get a mortgage of five percent. Uh, you can get a mortgage at five with uh, the five percent deposit. But deposit. I normally advise if you can go as far as ten percent. Mm. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. So that's why I encourage people to save up. Just save up as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for coming onto our channel today, and I'm sure our people have been blessed. So. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this interview with uh, with Connie, and she's very much available and happy to support you. All. Do use you know a, a reference code, you know Daspra Careers and Investment, to let her know you've come through this interview. God bless, and we'll see you in the next interview. Bye.